Hello, hello, buongiorno a tutti. Someone asked me about the glue and uh, animal glue, and uh, so now I want to talk about a little bit about the glue and not only about the animal glue. I took here also the Loctite super glue. I have here from Uhu, well, I think this is from Henkel or maybe it's not Henkel, I don't know, Uhu, a two component uh, glue, a epoxy. We have here glue to spray. We use all these kind of things here, even in the workshop, you know, even super glue sometimes is good if you have it for something. Uh, even this one for the pictures to glue on the certificates is very good. Uh, the Gorilla Glue, I actually I bought it when I was years ago in America and uh, it's very dusty, never has been opened and I think it's going bad here. It's a very impressive glue which penetrates for centimeters and centimeters into the wood and on the other side gets foamy. Um, then this one here I'm using for actually if I have to repair my shoes myself or for uh, covering some texture on some items, mostly for homework. Um, this one is just to glue the antique windows here in the window in the shop and it's water resistant for a white glue from Patex. Tough stuff, you can even use it for boats and things like this. And then we have from Tightbond, there's actually one in between missing and then uh, the opinions about while in while making uh, go. This is a white glue and there's some other white glues and the white glues as you know is white because there's this zinc oxidite inside which helps to uh, uh, make the, the, the gluing uh, action. Now and here there is the animal glue um, which uh, is commonly used for violin making. Now, there are glues and glues, and now which one is the best, right? The, the key point is that in mass production, people use white glue, which is somehow the really lousy quality. They use something like this, uh, which they use and they believe that then they will, they will not have any problems anymore if they use white glue. But the matter of fact is that even the white glue takes time, more or less, as the animal glue to dry. If you repair with white glue, uh, if you uh, have an economic instrument made with white glue or close the top with white glue and you have to open it up, it's kind of impossible to open up a joint made with white glue, okay? And this is not good because instruments are always moving because of the structure of an instrument, how it is made, it, it always will open up, okay? I have here the ribs and I told you here when I put on the top, it will, because the ears are like this and it is shrinking only like this and never in the length, and the ribs here are like this, it will over the years open up and we really hope it's going to open up because if it's not opening up, the top or the back is cracking and we don't want that pieces are cracking. We prefer that glued joints are opening up. Now if this one is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking over the hundreds of years, sooner or later top and back will not fit on the on the ribs anymore and then you have to even to make a repair work which is very commonly made on antique instruments that you have to take off a rib from the uh, from the blocks here and again to take it off you need a glue which is reversible and none of these glues is reversible so a violin maker would just hammer himself on his own fingers by using a white glue, okay? And it is kind of a, a, a very primitive uh, thinking that if you would now glue your things with white glue like this, you can open it up. Now, when I say this, I have to admit that in violin making school, we used this white glue to glue the ribs, and I still like to use it 
for a very simple reason, because with this white glue from tight bond, if you glue it and you want to take it off, it's very easy to take it off. Okay, um, much easier than you actually would think. So this is probably the only glue I would use, and indeed I'm only taking tight bond this. One. Okay, there are some makers that will like the, the blue bottle. I don't know the differences between the blue and the red one. I just take this red one here, and in case there is a problem with the ribs, I'm always surprised how easy it is to take off the ribs. Okay, but I would not make a joint with a glue like this a, to a joint of the top or at the back um, because it's not so strong as the animal glue and uh, the animal glue has a as it is uh, called animal glue you can already uh, hear there's some animals have to sacrifice their lives for our violin making uh, I'm not a maniac when it comes to meat I don't eat that much meat not even once a week uh, but I eat it. I'm not now serious uh, uh, vegetarian, but I, I, I very much uh, understand vegetarians because of their uh, um, ideology and ideas about it. Because the mass industry, I don't like that that much as well. Uh, I eat fish, and I also use fish glue. Okay. And I have a rabbit skin glue, and then I have just animal glue. Now the difference is always the, the, the animal or the part of the of the uh, animal you take to make this glue, and it is nothing else than a soup. Okay, so you can make, even make chicken glue if you want. You just throw the chicken into the water, boil it. And then you get this soup, and then you just reduce this soup, all the water is out, and what remains is something like this. Okay? If it is like a drop or something, then it is looking like this one. Now, this one here, I think, is a, a Japanese um, fish glue. The Japanese fish glue is probably the non plus ultra, it's, it's like the super glue and of the animal glues because it's super strong, super strong and maybe a little bit too much, okay? And that's why I like to mix it a little bit. The most lousiest one is this one. Uh, I, I have it, it's just, it's very ugly smelling when you uh, put some water into it. I'll show you how, how we do that. And it costs very little. And artists are using this one, let's say, when they put on the linen, and then they put a layer of this one in order that they soak the linen, and then they put the white paint on it, right? This is animal glue, it's not a fish, is this one. Rabbit is this one, a rabbit skin from Germany, Crema. Okay. And uh, uh, the culture of the glue is actually a very long culture about it. Uh, there I was looking in my books if I find something a little bit more about how they make it and who makes it and, and things like this. It's always a, a protein based uh, glue, okay? And you put it with some water and then you boil it. Now here I have this baby bottle uh, cooker and uh, you can uh, put the temperature here. I actually wanted to put it and show you but then you can impress. It's like 85 degrees at 100 degrees Celsius, water is boiling, and at 85 degrees, 80, 85 degrees, if you put the water and then you have this glue inside in Bagno Maria, I don't know how you call that in English, and uh, so it isn't, you don't put it directly on the fire. Now it is like jello, you can even. Yeah? And uh, this is now the glue. I, by looking at it, I think it's a little bit too dense because when you open it up, um, the water is evaporated. So by the time you use it, you always have to adjust it a little bit. And the more you use it, the more you get used to it. Woodworkers, furniture makers, let's say 50 years ago, in the morning, the first thing, they put it on the pot with the glue, right? Um, we don't put in the morning the glue immediately on. We don't have to. We don't make so many instruments. So only when we need it, we put on the glue. We change the water. 
and then we put it in here, okay? So I don't know if you see this, the water, when I put it in, the water comes up. And so it's inside the water and uh, you have this uh, here. Um, when it is um, open and it's cooling down and you have a cat in your house, you have to watch out because the cat probably will throw down the whole jar until this jar is broken and then will eat the glue, which is a little bit dangerous with this broken glass around. So watch out that it's always closed so your cat doesn't eat your glue. It, cats don't um, taste uh, salty and sweet, but they smell the glue and they want to eat that, okay? Another ease, um, use we are using now, so we glue actually mainly everything with this animal glue. And some areas before, let's say, a rib, uh, uh, before we uh, glue the top and the back, for instance, the corner blocks here are just... Um, are soaking too much uh, glue if you would just put one time of glue so you put some animal glue with water here so it soaks in you get it dry you clean it and then you can glue on top and back okay same thing if you before uh, gluing in the neck the surface of the of the uh, of the scroll you put some animal glue first get it dry and then you glue it in okay with the glue I showed you. Before varnishing, you treat the top of the violin with uh, always animal glue with water and I would say you have this normal um, animal glue, um, let's say you put one part of this animal glue already liquid here and then you put another four or five parts of water and then you get it a little bit more light it's the same thing it's just more water and you just put a layer of this on the top in order that the varnish doesn't soak in that much on your instrument uh, this I use when I varnish with spirit varnish with oil varnish I use the casein preparation with the calcium which is a different preparation but this is another use of the animal glue and uh, so the main reason we don't use uh, two compound epoxy hearts to um, epoxy um, to, uh, or super glue to make violins or gorilla glue and uh, patex and things like this is that the animal glue, even so it's very old stylish, it is reversible and you can always re-glue the things if they open up and if something is opening up it's actually a good sign and white glue joints for instance are signing the area where it is glued and there is the wood, the glue and wood. And the good glued area doesn't make like this that there is a layer of glue. The glue should go into the wood and then when it's dry, pull the two parts together, okay? For of course the two parts without glue have to fit already perfect. I hope this is now everything about the glue. No more questions, but I know you have always some more questions. If you want to go a little bit more further into the whole subject, my Patreon channel is just the right area for you if you want to know more. If you just have it like this or you have some questions, write me down below and I will let you know if you are the right man for my Patreon channel or just I will give you the answer. Tell your friends. Thanks for watching, subscribe, I know you didn't yet, and see you next time. Bye bye, ciao ciao!